And then to kind of end it, we have to have this article called of Sky Sports News regarding Scott McTominay saying there's no more toxicity at United. I don't want to hear from Scott McTominay. I swear to God, I don't want to hear from him. He's lucky to still be at the club. If United were where we were, where we meant to be back in the day, he would never be playing for us at this level or with this level of importance. The fact that he's that important to us as a team, the fact that we're having to depend on the likes of McTominay and Maguire says everything about where we are currently. But again, he's one of the only players that actually doesn't mind speaking to the press. He has enough courage to actually speak and say his piece, even if some of the stuff I don't agree with him. So fair enough in that regard. But this is, you know, emblematic, I feel like, of where we are as a team. Because, you know, he was also meant to be sold in the summer, but, you know, it didn't happen. But whatever. Let's continue with the article. Um, McTominay, who's worked under Jose Mourinho, Liga on Solskjaer, and Raf Ragnick, admits it's been a problem on the previous coaches. But the midfielder has come out and defended Ten Hag. Of course he's going to defend him because he's playing as well. He says... We have big characters in the dressing room. It's not like other managers where it's been toxic at times. The boys are firmly behind the manager. Of course they are, because I think the there is also, I feel like, a feeling behind some of these players. They know if Eric Ten Hag gets sacked, they're next on the chopping block. Whoever the next manager is after Eric Ten Hag, they're going to get a lot more time and a lot more grace. These players have completely, I feel like, tested the patience of the fans. Even players like Rashford, right like horrendous like he came on against Bournemouth did absolutely nothing he was running back trying to track back and whatever it may be but he was absolutely pants I think the fans are finally fed up with these players so these players know they have to kind of back the manager they kind of have to put performances in for him because if not if he gets fired the next one chopping block are these players um players can get lost in translation um we just want to do well for the club it's as simple as that yeah right allegedly yeah fucking right um, but Tenag is still his faith in the misfiring quad. He's also relying on Galatasaray to draw another year. So exactly. We have to hope that Galatasaray and FC Copenhagen draw, which is not going to happen because they both have to, if they both win, they 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 guarantee, um, you know, progression for themselves in the fucking competition. And it's going to be an attacking game, I would imagine. Um, Copenhagen play good attacking football. So does Galatasaray. So it's going to be a very open game, end-to-end stuff. I don't see a draw happening, personally. And I personally don't want us to go through we don't deserve to be rewarded in that way. Um, it continues to say, our, our team gives me hope. <sighs> Honestly, Eric Ten Hag's full of shit. We are not consistent, but we have also very good performances and highs. What? What highs? Are, honestly, I don't know if he says this like he means this or if he's saying this to just G up the players, but what good performances and highs have we had? Really? Consistently over the season? When we get it, we are able to beat any opponent. Yeah, but it's not consistent enough. That's a problem. The game against Chelsea and Everton, the games against Galatasaray, I know this team can perform at really high levels. Again, I don't think they're really high level performances. I think, if anything, we took advantage of teams that didn't play well. Um, it's not that we did three months ago. We did it last week. We have a great right mood, spirit, and everyone is ready for it. Then we are able to do it. He says, Old Trafford is not quite a nice place to come for an opponent, but we know it starts with us. It's, it's always been a nice place with Ericsson Hogg. This current United team have made it a nice place. There's a very strong bond between the team and the fans. They're always behind us. When we have set back, we have to take it. And um, this two short comments from him are really strange. This one here, right? Where he says, I sympathize with Ten Hag. I'm not too sure if Tuchel thinks if he gets fired from Bayern Munich that he's next in line for United job, but he seems to be overly positive and gracious when it comes to talking about United. Maybe because, I don't know, maybe he's been sounded out in the background to take over United, but the comments from Tuchel were very interesting. Um, let me read them for you. He says, I sympathize with all my colleagues, no matter whether they are um, they have a change of ownership or not. I know it's sometimes demanding and sometimes more difficult than it looks from the outside. Um, I think I know what it takes to manage big clubs. Hmm. Is he to, does he want to be United manager and big players? And it's sometimes demanding and sometimes there are periods where you feel stuck or the changes are not coming quickly enough for you as a coach. It's why I sympathize really for my colleague, but not tomorrow. Um, we will try to beat him and use the stage to make the next step in our development. We still have a long way to go and need to be very tough to withstand the energy in the club um, that is here. I'm pretty sure United will bounce back like always. It sounds like he's, I wouldn't say twerking for us, but it does sound like he's flirting with us a little bit. A two show there. So let's see what happens. Um, a game against fucking um, Bayern Munich. Um, I'm not looking forward to it, to be fair. I've got to be honest. And I also don't think we deserve to go through. So I hope we lose. I'm not going to lie. I absolutely hope we fucking lose.